What's up, Gunpla Modelers? This is Strider Prime, bringing you a new edition of Gundam Customs. And today, I am going to build the super deformed Neo Zeon NZ999. From episode 7 of Mobile Suits Gundam Unicorn OVA animated series. This is, of course, the smaller version of the larger 144th scale version of this kit that came out this year. And, like I said before, there's no way in the world I was going to get a 144th scale version of that kit, even if I wanted. Because I really would not know where the hell I'm going to put it in this, in this room. I mean, I would have to literally get rid of a lot of things, because not only of how big it is, how tall it is, and how ridic ridiculously huge it, that, that kit is. If there's a kit that will define 2014 and from Bandai's, uh, from Bandai's catalog, it has to be, of course, the high-grade Neo Zeon. But considering that I'm not, wasn't, I wasn't planning to get this, I was more comfortable getting this guy. And even in an SD kit line, it's also big, surprisingly. It's, it is a big box, as you can see here. I got this kit from uh, Gundam Planet, and I I was hesitant to say I was going to build it next, but then after looking at it so many times and looking at the contents, I said, you know what, this has to be built. It really does. I haven't seen that many online video builds, uh, other other than the build that uh, Prime 92 did. But I wanted to try this next. And it's a shame that if I do this pretty well, that Comic-Con wouldn't allow me to bring three kits. They only allow me two. So I, I'm just going to build this for, for my own personal preferences. Um, this is, of course, a custom video build. So I will paint it in a different color tone. Now this kit has all the features that was seen in the movie. First things first, this comes with a high grade ver I mean an SD version of the Sosby, which surprisingly I think I have one, but I never built. I don't know if I ever purchased one of these. I have to check my uh, stock. But this will be the first time I'm building an SD version of the Sazabi. Um, there's a lot of gimmicks, a lot of features, of course. You'll have the specific bazooka weapon that comes with the Sazabi. And then, of course, in the Neo Zeon, you could see that it, can, it has its three, six arms that could come out. Uh, the boosters, which can be removed. I can see it comes with the section where the bazookas comes out off the side shoulders. And, of course, that neat little ring or you know the ne um, yellow neon type ring that comes out as you can see here the effect that was shown in the movie all right let's open this up and see what we have to work with Okay, so the first thing I'm looking at is parts from the Nia, from the um, Sinanju. And I see it comes with its decals, sticker, uh, polycaps. I see three different tones of color, black, red, white, and some, Nia, some uh, clear parts. I see parts of the weapons. And then now I see some parts specifically for the with the Neo Zeon, inner frame, beam rifle, just part of the, sh of the suit. Wow, this is pretty cool, I like that. Shoulders, the bottom part of the ship, oh, the uh, mobile armor. More of the Sazabi be parts, er, Sinanji parts, keep saying Sazabi. Here are the ring parts, which is 
I'm noticing it's bending. And the remaining charcoal part's in a small little stand. Hmm. Let's put this to the side. Look at this little, little, little manual. Let's, let me adjust the camera a bit. Poster type thing. So the contents of the parts is shown here in these two sections. Then we have the parts that represents the size of B. So, excuse me, Sinanju. Assembly of the Sinanju on two pages, and actually three parts of this of this magazine of this uh, instruction. Wow, I'll keep going on to four. And then we go into the assembly of the of the Neo Zeon. And then going to the color section of this. I mean, if you're going to do color, why not do color on both ends? Doesn't make any sense. Well, anyway, so we have the symbol here to the point where you have the putting on the ring and how to maneuver the kit. Okay. There's a little ma short little comic manga type thing, and of course, I'm not going to make this a simple bit. Here's some detailed look of the kit painted just like on the box and the color guide to make, of course, this. Going back to this. Now, what am I going to do with this? Now, I'm not really fond of the red. It's too much red for me. <laughs> I've seen a lot of kits that are red, and some of them are well-deserved, especially this one. But, since this is going to be a custom paint job, I am not going to paint it red. I will prime it, of course, like I normally did. I well, actually didn't do it in my last kit, but I will prime it. Then, I'm going to begin pre-shading, pre-shading that is, all the lines that's on this kit, using black number two. Now, I wanted to do this on my Proto Zero Gundam, which would have been perfect uh, instead of me painting the whole part. I'm sorry, instead of me painting this, the pre-shaded areas, I painted the whole part of the kit of each part and then I did uh, um, you know the normal color over it while leaving the sides alone but instead for this kit I'm going to appreciate each and every part then originally I was going to go back to this using uh, number 69's off-white color I have very very little off-white color here yeah, I think I have about enough. Actually, I have about enough to repair the parts that I, uh, that needs to be recovered up again on my uh, part of zero. So I'm going to leave that alone, and that will be used for that. Instead, I think I will might, might as well use a standard uh, cool white color, primary uh, gloss from Mr. Hobbies. So yes, I am going to paint this white. It's like um. I originally wanted to paint the size, um, the size to be white at one point, but I kind of figured that everybody was going to do it. So I said, all right, I'll make the Sinanju uh, Neo and Neo Zeong white as well. The 
inner frame will not be um, gunmetal or, or uh, metallic gray. Instead, I'll use dark gray for the inner frame parts. Now, there is one thing that I noticed that was in the kit. And uh, I don't know if you can see it here. Well, it's pretty much safe to say it's this part right there. The chest plate, the shield, and the rear the rear emblem, as you can see there, is all, you know, well the the, the chest plate and the and the shield is all, you know, gold, including of course the the wrist, you know, the arms, but the back one is white. So I think what I'm gonna do is since I'm painting this whole thing white. I'm going. I, I I originally was thinking maybe I should do gold using my pale gold for this. Now this will entitle, uh, or um, pretty much safe to say, I can pretty much do a um, a reverse wash. I believe I have black. As a matter of fact, I had black put to the side for my um, for my Proto Zero. But I don't know where I put it, so I know I put it someplace. I just gotta go find it. So I was thinking of doing a reverse wash by applying this. This is a lacquer base, and then doing enamel over it, and then using thinner, enamel thinner, which I know for for the life of me I am out of it. But I, I have to double check again. I'm going to remove all the lines. That's that I can understand I can do with this. The shield on the other hand, that's a different story. But then again, I'm not gonna use the shield on this kit, but many people but yeah, the shield is right there. I didn't realize that it's in it's stored in the back. Eesh. Now I'm slowly considering maybe not doing this. Yeah. That's a pain on you. you know what to do with reverse wash. All right, we'll figure this out. So I have the pale gold. I have the three colors that I will be using for this kit. Let's begin building SD Neo Xeon. 